Hello everyone, I'm Denise Love, and here's a little preview of what we're gonna be doing today. So let's get started. Today, I kinda wanna play in these yummy Provence pigments that I created, and I'll link the video below on where I got those, showing you the first projects that I did with it. But a couple weeks ago, um, I painted with these for the first time, and they're so beautiful. They're pigments from an ochre quarry in Provence, and they're just so lovely. And I'm just taping down some Hanamule watercolor paper, um, 9 by 12, 140 pound cold press. And I just thought it might be fun to play. And a lot of times I will just eyeball this. I'm using painter's tape, um, but I'll just kind of eyeball where I want that. I'm not looking for perfection. And I wanted to kind of show you another little tip with the gold ink. We'll try a different method of applying it. <laughs> I think you're gonna love it. And I've got some water over here. I might just go ahead. So these were the watercolors that I handmade from these yummy pigments. And you can see um, the delicious colors of red and ochre and um, shale, which looks like concrete. So I have these in my painter's palette, uh, watercolor diary. Um, and I'm just gonna pull it out so I can kind of look at what the colors are. I love how two that are basically look the same in this little palette. Um, it looks so different here on this card. And I kind of want to make some lovely little abstracts um, with these. I'm going to go ahead and wet them so that they're activating and they're ready for me to use. And I'm just spraying that with some water there. Um, but I'm kind of thinking, and I didn't actually put these in order, but I'm kind of thinking I like this number five because it's so light and almost not there like it's a great uh, test and play for opacities which is something that I've kind of been playing with lately um, I'm kind of feeling like this number seven is super lovely um, maybe we're in maybe we're in a neutral kind of gray phase um, actually I like this number six too um, and I'm not it's just kind of what, what feels good today. It's nothing specific. I'm not trying to create anything, but these three are pretty. And then what should we throw in there as a little pop? Like this number 14, oh, love that. And let's just see, um, which one is that? Where is that? I think it might be this one. There we go. I kind of numbered them and then I didn't number the, <laughs> I did not put the same number on the pigments. So good luck for me trying to figure out when I run out of one of these, what, what was that color? And I think I'm going to start out now that we've kind of got our color palette. I want to do just some little whimsical watercolors in here. And what I might do is uh, maybe start off wetting the paper in one spot here and then adding some uh, watercolors to it. And then in between like each area where I've added something, maybe I'm going to let these kind of dry a little bit and let each layer kind of do its thing and, and sit on top of each other perhaps. I'm just kind of, you know, giving some ideas, thinking out loud. Um, on where my thoughts are going here with the different pieces and this is that this is that one that's so light you really can't see it until it dries it's just very subtle um, which I kind of love that I kind of love that a lot and I could go ahead I could go ahead and maybe come back over here I could let some kind of blend in with it and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do shapes on top of shapes today and just kind of see like what what do we get and it's just all about the play some maybe a little darker some maybe a little lighter it's just kind of fun to just see and experiment and maybe drop some water in and just see what we get 
and we can we can also you know dry that brush off if we want to try um, we could scoop some of this back up kind of just see like what would that be like just as an opacity change and leave some color near the end we could do some of that I really liked that actually and some of these that are heavier so much fun it's all about experimenting maybe throw a little water in here and we can watch how the water blooms out a little bit okay I'm liking that a lot was this number seven because this one was kind of the gray one huh I like that I might want that to be dry and see because that's wet what wet watercolor hitting wet watercolor and what would that look like if one of these were dry would it be solid let's try this one here See, look how the difference in that is. That's definitely fun to experiment and be like, oh, that's what I was looking for. I needed to let that paint dry. It's all in the experimenting that we learn some of these fun things. And then, okay, so I really loved that. I might go ahead. I usually like to let watercolor dry on its own and kind of do its own thing. Um, that one right there, definitely doing something fun. And I might come back with the one that looks like red mud, which this looks like I could have got it out of my own front yard. And, you know, we can grab a little sampler piece and see, like, what what do we want to do there? Do we want this to do some lines? Um, do we want it to do another shape? It's kind of like, what, what do we want this to do? Do I want to kind of bring it out here and just be like, oh, that's what we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> just experimenting and having some fun and that one's like super duper duper pigmented so it's gonna be a little harder to get like a super light layer maybe we'll, oh yeah see that's exactly like maybe we'll do a light layer on this one I kind of like that come back this way with this one and I could throw in some heavier color there I've become uh, obsessed with playing with different opacities real thin versus real heavy and if we get real heavy can we get that way more opaque than what we've got underneath it I've just become you know really kind of obsessed playing with these ideas of opacity and as you're going along in your art journey you know you'll find these things too that you'll kind of be obsessed about and play with and think about and you're like oh what what would happen if I did you know this or that or how would this affect something if I were to do you know whatever it is that you're contemplating Ooh, I like that. Started off with that lighter color, but I just kind of ran that through the wet paint that was already there. That's pretty fun. And then what I might do is come back with, say, a pencil. This is the art graph. Mm. Water soluble 6B. So this one's water soluble. I think that's not what I want got lots of pencils over here because I like pencils looking for pit matte graphite matte that's the one I want and I'm just kind of at this point playing I'm hoping to get one that I love when we're done but if I don't that's okay it's all about the play and I might just kind of add some pencil mark in here and see, you know, did that kind of get me closer to what I might be wanting today? I'm still kind of intuitive painting when I do these. Um, oh, maybe I want it lighter. Oh, see, there we go. Because I'm doing what feels good and I'm just experimenting. 
and I'm just kind of like, oh, what would happen if I did this or I did that? Okay, but I like this one. This one's going to be the winner today. <laughs> and then, what? I kind of want it to dry and maybe I can make a mark or two. So I'm going to actually help this one. Usually I want you to have the patience not to do that, but I get it. Sometimes it's it's impatient. You want to move to the next thing. Me too. All right, so I'm thinking this dark color right here might be nice as like a little mark making. What do we think about that? Could have been a smaller brush, but I still think it's fun. I'm liking that. Let's just do some more out here. That's still wet, but that's kind of interesting. So let's just go with it. And then we can see the difference of dropping this on wet watercolor versus dropping it on dry. I like those type of experiments. Ooh, I really like it actually. Now I kind of wish I had done wet there. Dang it, why did I dry that? <laughs> you should have been like, no! <laughs> resist it. Resist, woman, resist. Alright, I think I need to let these dry. Um, but what I really wanted to show you today is if we wanted to add some gold, and I might go back and do some different abstracts for gold. I'll show you this again. This is that gold mica ink. I put some of that ink into this yummy fine line applicator, and it has a nice fine tip on it. And so now this is another option for a way that you can use your inks um, that maybe you've never thought of. And I'm thinking, you know, let's do it on this one. Let's just Let's just do some mark making. So you got to get it started. You might get it started on um, a different piece of paper and practice a bit so that you kind of see how that ink comes out because it's coming out fast and flowy. And I don't want you to do that on something that's very important. Um, and this is a big, this is kind of a big tip for what I would kind of want it to be. So I'm kind of wondering like in my mind, is there a finer tip than the standard tip? Um, but it is nice. It's an airtight container. It's got a little pin nib in here that goes down into that uh, top so that it doesn't clog. And then you can mark make and play and come back and add some designs to oh, see there I liked that let's do that over here hopefully I don't ruin it this is my favorite one today um <gasps> oh, oh right there look how pretty that is oh my goodness so yes fine liner tips is another way that we could do this without using a dip pen so I just wanted to kind of break the ice and throw that out there because I happened to sit here and I thought of these they're in my drawer over here look at that one right there and then you get that little bit of shimmer and that yumminess of that natural ochre that one right there see this is why I do four or five or eight or ten or twelve little pieces at a time especially pieces like this where I'm experimenting and testing out different uh, compositions and I'm like ooh, what do I want to create today I'm not sure um, this one is the one that is totally made today's piece of art super fun and you know we can come back in some of these other ones and do some mark making and kind of finish them off um, they could be pieces that we cut off cut up to create other art we can store them away um, you might look at these later and think oh this one's my favorite and I didn't like it when I did it I do that so many times um, just to kind of be like just just depends on that day like what what you're seeing when you look at it and later you're like in a different frame of mind you've got different experiences behind you and then you're like oh what was I thinking this is the best thing I've ever made <laughs> I wouldn't say that about this one though. Something's off with that one. Definitely love that one. These two I'd probably, uh, three I'd probably put over there in my junk bin. Let me dry this one and we're gonna cut this one out. 
that gold is going to take a bit to dry. So we're going to be super careful. Ooh. And we could have come back with more materials, but in my mind, I wanted a very something very specific today playing in these handmade watercolors. Look how pretty that is. And I'm going to try to very carefully cut these without running that gold. Ooh, oh yeah, see, perfect. There we go. Um, so this paper was 9 by 12, so I'm going to cut it right about there. Oh, yes. Let's cut this one up while we're here. So four and a half is about in half. Really the goal today is this one piece. This one piece made the whole day. And if you do several and you get one that you liked, oh, there we go. Look at the one that we liked. I actually love, love that. And you can see that fine liner, put that line on there. Um, so beautifully that it just shines just a tad and I could come back with my dip pen if I really wanted to add just a tiny bit more like maybe some dots I feel like it could use a couple dots and it also helped me um, get some of the ink out of my container there that I had overly filled um but I definitely had to water that ink down. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at that. All right. So that was super fun. Okay. Hope you loved seeing the little tip that I came up with for the ink um, so that you don't have to have a dip pen. You don't have to have a brush. You can control it. Um, and I'm going to have to look and see if it comes in a finer point than that standard tip because I almost think because this ink is um, so liquidy that we could even use something a tiny bit smaller and have even a finer line um, but this is a fantastic option for the ink and I'll definitely be using this more going forward and if you're wondering how did you get the ink in the bottle because Let's not do this on top of the piece of art that we like today. <laughs> um, you see it's a little tiny lip there. And what I did, because I didn't have, well I do have, but I can't find it, a funnel. I'll probably find it as soon as I hang up. Um, but this is a uh, pipette. And look, you just pipette that stuff right in there. How easy is that? So I just pipetted like, you know, 10 pipes worth of the gold and got that right in my container was super easy no mess ah just some fun little tricks there getting your ink okay so today successful here's my yummy one that i loved the one that i'm like it's okay not my favorite this one i'm like hmm that's a dud <laughs> and this one i'm like hmm it doesn't matter which way we go, it's a dud. Um, so, if I'd only painted the three duds, I'd have been very unhappy. So try to paint more at one time, um, because as you're going, you're gonna kind of perfect your technique and the way that you like to lay paint down. And hopefully by the end of it, you've got one piece that made the whole day worth all the trials and tribulations and experimenting that you did. So, hope you loved these. I can't wait to see what you're creating. Feel free to tag me at Two Little Owls Art on Instagram. You can join the Facebook group that I have for people. I'll link all that down below in the comments. And I'll share a link to the original Provence video where I talked about where these came from and the abstracts that I made. And, and I'll see you next time.